Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Pokemon card live stream. This is the Card Economist, and we've been doing this for like two weeks, I think, roughly. Oh, I don't need this on my table. Got my pocket knife over there. All right, oh, and let's adjust the camera. I want it to be roughly in the middle of the table. There we go, that looks nice. So, we got two vintage Pokemon card packs to open. This is for Sam. We got one fossil, one jungle. We'll see what he pulls on those. And then I'm going to be opening up these tins for me. The tins together, they cost about 40 bucks. So it'll be interesting to see if the tins can match roughly what you get from a vintage pack, you know? Because one of the questions you have to ask yourself is, what would you rather have? Uh, the, the vintage packs are really interesting because every time you open up a vintage pack, not only are the common and uncommon cards worth a few dollars each, especially if you pull a decent uncommon, um, or if you can grade them and get a perfect 10 on them. Not only that, but you're guaranteed to get a rare Pokemon out of one of these cards where the rare cards from the Sun and Moon sets, they're not really valuable. I mean, they're, uh, they're roughly a dollar, um, but you don't really get any that are worth a few dollars, you know what I mean? And that's not true for these. You actually do get some that are worth it. So Sam, these are the packs. I pulled them off at the top of the stacks. Same, you know, we're going to go the same order the whole way through. And uh, good luck on these pulls. I hope you get some nice ones. Speaking of which, for those of you who are might be interested in getting some pulls, why don't I... Hmm, I should write, like, the price of these down or something. Let's see. Show me another energy card real fast. Grab two energy cards. Should have done this before. Should have done this before we started this. Oh. All right. So the jungle packs are 35, or 35, you wish, $65 each, and the fossil cards are $60 each, slightly cheaper. There you go. Hmm. I wonder if I can get that to stay in place, actually. Maybe back? Oh, yeah, in the back it works. All right. So 65 and 60. And when they're gone, they're gone. You can even buy, you can buy the packs to have me ship them to you later. Drop that down there. You can buy the packs to have me ship them to you later, so I don't have to open them on, on stream if you just want to have a unweighted jungle or fossil booster pack. Uh, you can also send booster packs in for grading. Did you know that? So PSA will grade the booster itself, the booster unopened, and then it could come back with a nice grade. You can just look at an unopened booster pack because people like to do that. They look cool. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with these. These are for Sam. Good luck, Sam. See what you pull. We had some great pulls yesterday. The stream was blurry when you look at the uh, when you look at the uh, upload to YouTube. It's blurry, and I did research, and I know why. There's two types of ways to to stream. There's two ways that software optimize streaming. One way they optimize is for low latency. Low latency is when I talk and read your comments, and it's basically in real time. Now the problem with the low latency stream is it prioritizes the stream being in real, real time, but it doesn't prioritize the quality of the graphics of the stream. That's what we have. We have a low latency stream. Okay, here we go. My hands are all shaky, but it's not because I'm nervous. It's just when you deal with something very delicately, it actually makes your hands shakier. <laughs> so recycle. Psyduck, Shelter, Kabuto, Krabby, Slowpoke, Mysterious Fossil, and you got the Holographic Raichu. Nice job, Sam. Look at that. Holographic Raichu from the Fossil set. Beautiful. You also got Magmar, Ghastly, and Kingler. Take a closer look at the card. I don't know if Sam's watching right now. I think he said we stream pretty late for him. The card's looking nice and clean. I could be wrong. I think I see a very faint print line right here, but just by his tail, and that's it. It's very faint. It's like right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Very faint. Uh, but crazy enough, the rest of the card looks really good. How about the centering? Centering is not bad. Um, I'm not seeing any silvering. Am I? Well, silvering looks good. Check the back of the card. We're touching it very carefully. Okay, so I see some. I see a white speck down there, and a very light white speck up there. I would say this would probably at least get a nine. You know, yeah, I'll be used to this. Why not? This would probably at least get a nine, if I had to guess. It could possibly get a ten. So nice on the first pack, man. 
Did you spend all your money on Black Friday just to get Pokemon? Uh, something like that. <laughs> something like that. Okay, so here's Raichu. Here's your first pack. And I don't know if we can set this up like this. Okay, next pack. This is from the Jungle Set. Double Hollows? We'll have to see. We will have to see. I spent a lot of money on Black Friday on Yu-Gi-Oh cards. What? That's not Pokemon. Yu-Gi-Oh is not Pokemon. Okay, so here we go. Let's flip this over. All right, from the jungle set. Now, we got plenty of jungle set packs left. Let's see. We have Oddish, Bellsprout, Meowth. There we go. All right, I think that the stream is back up. Let me know if you guys can see everything properly. See on my screen, the graphics are very high quality. However, I suspect when this gets uploaded, the stream's gonna be very blurry. And what it could do is similar to what happens on my gaming channel. They could add a delay to the stream and the delay ensures that the video quality is high quality, right? Uh, and that's why there's always like a 30 second to one minute delay over on my gaming channel. But with the iPhone, it's like, no, low latency, bad graphics. So I got to figure out how to fix that. I also need to contact my internet provider and tell them that the internet is trashed here and that I'm leaving if they don't give me better internet because I'm so tired of this problem. I really am. We have the same problem on the gaming channel. All right, here we go. Oh, okay. And for your uh, rare card, you've got non-holographic Flareon. Still a very good pull. Flareon's considered... Uh, the best holographic card to pull in the set. So getting the non-holographic version of it is pretty good as well, I would say. So we got Flareon, Marowak, Primeape, and Dodrio for your uncommons. Nice. Okay. Very good. Set these down. Let's go ahead and get this all sleeved up. Well, congratulations, Sam. Thank you for purchasing two packs of this off of me. Once we're out, we're out. These are truly unweighed, or unweighted, if you want to pronounce it that way. Whoops, I touched them. Unweighted packs. You know, when you buy unweighted packs off of eBay, you don't actually know if the seller has weighed them or not, because he could just lie, honestly. It's not that hard to get a nice scale and just lie about it. But when you buy packs right here live for me, all the packs are for you guys, and you know that I haven't weighed any of them, because you can actually watch me handling them. And you can watch me pulling holographic cards out of them. So this is actually not a bad deal in my opinion. If you were hoping to buy just one or two vintage cards, this is the way I would probably do it. Okay, so I'll ship these off to Sam. Sam had actually purchased some other cards for me, so this gets added to his order. Should we leave these standing up? We'll leave these standing up for fun. Congratulations, Sam. The Raichu is really good looking, actually. Yeah, I would be considering grading him myself. So here we go. For me, I've got these two tins, and these are worth about $40 together. And the question is, will the tins give better pulls than uh, the two vintage booster packs? And I have no idea what's even in these. So I can see that there's a promo card. Usually promo cards are not worth that much because the promo cards are, like, guaranteed so the promo cards won't be, won't be worth much. I don't know what booster packs are in here because I've never opened these before. And it doesn't say what boot, you know, what set this is from on the back. I don't even know. So I'm very curious. Here we go. And hopefully we get some booster packs in the mail soon. Because I have ordered quite a few packs in the mail, but I don't think they'll show up for another week almost. Mr. Clean says, kids these days, I collect the Uno cards. Feels good to be rich. <laughs> 205 says, it'll be four random assorted packs, usually from older sets. Really? That's interesting. So, tin number one. It's got the Vaporeon, huh? Hey, that's Cosmic Eclipse right there. That's actually not bad. Oops. We have Vaporeon. Okay, I can already tell something I'm going to want to do. I want to pull these boxes forward. There we go. Use them as a place to rest my cards. We have a code card. I do give these code cards away. However, I give them away in my Discord server. So if you'd like to have free codes, join the Discord server. There's a link in the description. 
Cosmic Eclipse, Cosmic Eclipse, Crimson Invasion, and X and Y Steam Siege. Uh oh, damn, dude, that's an old set. The Crimson Invasion is not a good set. I've already done research on that. Cosmic Eclipse is just okay. Tell you what, before we move on to opening those, let's get the other packs out. What smartphone do you use? I use an iPhone. Okay, let's get the next 10 open as well. Did that open up actually? Steam Siege. Yeah, we need to find out how to get the stream different so that it's not a low latency stream. I don't mind if there's a delay in the stream. I mind if the uh, stream quality drops. That's a really big deal. Because I want people to be able to watch the stream afterwards and enjoy nice high quality. Okay, we got the lid off. Here's Flareon looking very bent. So this is sad. Yeah, the Flareon's bent as hell. Um, man. That's, he wouldn't even be good for using in an actual card game. I feel like he'd give himself away with all the bends. Man, oh, that sucks so much. I'll bend him up. You're out of here, Flareon. Dude, that guy was bent as hell. Saw Cruz says, cut it. <laughs> You're right, I should have chopped it up. But well, I still can. Let's give him, let's give him the chop up. Where'd he, where'd he fall? Here he is. Ah, what a pity. Look at that. It's, it's kind of fun to destroy the cards too sometimes, you know, because you get a sense of what they what happens when they get destroyed, right? Look at that. It's like a, it's like a kid played with it. There we go. We have a diamond. <laughs> get out of here, Flareon. Joe Mama. I beat him up with the Joe Mama joke. Okay, so we get Cosmic Eclipse again. Again, not bad. Cosmic Eclipse again. That's not bad. Sun and Moon Crimson Invasion. And Steam Siege. Why does it feel like the tin was actually a way for Pokemon to sell off packs that aren't worth anything anymore? That's sad. Okay, so we did get the, Va the Vaporeon GX looks decent. And we have all these... Steam Siege, Crimson Invasion, Steam Siege, Crimson Invasion. I know for a fact the Crimson Invasion set doesn't really have anything crazy inside of it. I don't know anything about Steam Siege. Yeah, what do you guys think the most valuable card is from Steam Siege? Sun and Moon, Crimson Invasion. I, I say we start with the Steam Siege because I really don't have any high expectations for these at all. It is... They overprinted Steam Siege because it was so important for the meta in that time. Oh, interesting. That's not good. A Secret Rare Volcanion is the best card. Okay, so how's this go? Move that code card off. We have Ponita, Rufflet, Larvesta, Joltik, Tangela, Reverse Hollow Sh Shielden, and... Rare Volcarona. Huh, weird. He's fire and leaf. So weird. He has a weakness to fire. Huh. Never seen that before. And the Reverse Hollow Sheldon. He looks pretty clean. Place him in the Reverse Hollow pile. And these are all... We got a Uncommon Azumarill. Why is he this color? Is he shiny? That's so weird. He looks like a shiny one. Ninja Boy. Double typings, huh? Man. Let's pop this open real fast. I don't know how I felt about that. It made the card, uh, having two colors on the card seems kind of strange. Oh, I hope I didn't just reveal a bunch of crap. Carl, you're looking for the codes, Carl? What I do is I give the codes away in my Discord server. So if you would like some codes, be sure to pop in there and look for the channel where it says free codes, okay? So we got Nuzleaf, Bravaria, Lampent, Joltik, Ponyard, Fungus, Rufflet, Litleo, Reverse Hollow, and Pharos. He actually looks pretty good. And 
non-holographic Weavile. So nothing too crazy. Let's see, put this in the right set. Nothing too crazy. Wow, this actually looks really nice. At least with these uh, Steam Sieges, uh, I've never seen these artworks, so that's fun. Hmm. Oops, where am I placing my holographic rares? Where did I place my first holographic? Was it even holographic? I can't remember. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Okay, so we just got a holographic rare. We'll take these commons and uncommons, place them to the side. So nothing too exciting so far. All right, then we have Crimson Invasion, which if it was a good set, I would remember it, but I don't think it is. Some sets naturally have cards in it that are more collectible. All right. One, two, three. We got Hunter. Lusamine. Lusamine? Kakuna. Oh, that looks actually very cool. Salandit. Spoink. Carablast. Bunnelby. Chimchi. Uh, how do you say his name? Kimiko. Kimiko. Rosalo Pikachu with his face all squished. And a rare Escavalier. And a fairy energy. Wow, amazing. <laughs> the Pikachu looks nice. Some sets are more meta, some sets are more collectible. Oh, that's an interesting point. Here's our next. Chime Echo. Thank you, 205. Are you sure that's right? Chime Echo? Next, Crimson Invasion. Can't pop this out real fast. Ugh. Come on, man. Trying not to reveal the code here. Wes Kiba, he says, late again, how goes the cards? We got some really nice pulls over here for Sam. He got a non-holo Flareon, Pack Fresh, and a very good condition Raichu holographic from the Fall set. So consider this, the tins cost me 40 bucks plus taxes, right? Which actually would be closer to 44. Uh, but he actually pulled it, he, he took a $60 vintage pack and pulled this really nice Raichu out. So we're, we're, we're comparing them a little bit to see who, who does better, right? Uh, let's flip this over. So far, he's winning. <laughs> Excelgor, Counter Energy, Fighting Memory, Weedle, Execute, Punkaboo, Punkaboo, Swablu, Carablast, Reverse Hollow Gengar. He's always a cool card. And, oh, we got a GX, Executor GX. <laughs> Bitches be lining up for Executor. So I will go out on a leaf. See, he's got leaves on his head and suggest that Executor probably is not worth much. I don't know about the Gengar. The Gengar, how old is this card now? So this card is almost three years old now. He might be worth something at this point. He's a reverse hollow Gengar. Uh, Gengar is a popular Pokemon, but I'm gonna bet not. I will place him in my holographic rares pile. Uh, actually, you know, it's funny, Sam bought all of my holographic rares. Uh, I sell them in bulk for less than a dollar each and he bought the books uh, pile, so I'm starting up a new pile. Carl says, the Discord is not working. It says the invite may be expired or you maybe might not permission to join. I will go ahead and take a look into that. Could someone else confirm for me that the invite link to the Discord is not working? If you've never joined the Discord, can you check that for me? I'd, I'd really appreciate that. I will take a look into that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. It's really important. All right. Next pack. How are these code cards placed? Okay. Oh, don't look. So Cosmic Eclipse is actually a recent set, and it does have a full art uh, or hyper rare, whatever you want to call it, Charizard card, and that one's actually got pretty decent value. So if you were to pull it, you would be doing all right. So let's see. We have Dartrix. Lily's Full Force. Ends Resolve. Little Pup. Tramp Pinch, Sneasel, Sveal. I love this Alo Meowth, the way he looks like he's thinking. He looks so mischievous. Reverse Hollow Torkoal, he's uncommon. And Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia GX. I don't know if he's worth much. We'll find out. It's not a bad GX card. Better than the Executor. <laughs> Next pack. Oof. So, so far, the polls have been Alone Executor and Arceus Dialga Pal Palkia. Vaporeon doesn't really count. He's a promo. He's a promo. He's a guaranteed, and I guarantee you he doesn't go much. 
Some some promotional cards are worth it, but I, I doubt he's actually worth much. Don't look. Is Arceus? Arceus is Arceus? I didn't know that. Damn. That changes my whole perspective of his name. Arceus. Jolteon. Pangaro. Rapidash. Jangmo O. Rowlet. Skrelp. Pikachu. Teddy Ursa. Reverse Hollow Chinchu. Or Chinchou or whatever. And non holographic Slurpuff. You know, there's a lot of new Pokemon that I'm unfamiliar with, and I really am still learning their names. Plop that over there. We got two packs left, both from Cosmic Eclipse. Yeah, you might as well have just bought Cosmic Eclipse booster packs. Markinator says it's Arceus. Oh, so there's some disagreement. All right, code card goes over here. One, two, three. Oops. Lily's Polka Doll. You know, I actually like this card. Also, this booster pack, I'll probably save this. We're going to open this up on um, TikTok. So that's going for TikTok. Lily's Polka Doll. Togedemaru. Great Catcher. Coughing. Nose Pass. Snow Runt. Rock Ruff. Deerling. Reverse Hollow. Cricket Talk. And. Drampa, okay, Boomer. Drampa, <laughs> let's get Cricket Todd out of here. So those packs, I would say, were not that impressive. I actually would rather rather have the Raichu, the Hollow Raichu, or the Hollow Raichu. I mean, if you send him into PSA and get a good grade on him, it's probably actually very collectible. Uh, these cards will not be as collectible because there's going to be a billion of these, billion of these, and a billion of these. These are not that rare. A pack fresh Raichu is actually pretty rare. TikTok is dumb. Do I need an account for TikTok? Help, I'm a boomer. <laughs> you guys are funny. You're still talking about uh, how to pronounce Arceus or Arceus. Is there a game economist TikTok? There is, actually. Uh, it's the card economist TikTok, and I'm just, I'll open up like one pack on the channel. Just like one pack. So we'll save this pack for that channel. I, I don't know if they'll have anything good in it, but this is these are our pulls from the tins we lost the flareon just because he was in he was just damaged by the tin sadly and then so we would have had a, a flareon as well and then these cards are just you know this i don't know this would probably be like three if i had to guess this card will be like one to two dollars and this one will probably be three but it, if it's being used actually in decks then it could go up much more it could be about 10 to 15 depends on if it's being used it's arceus <laughs> all right so we're basically done opening packs just check to make sure nobody purchased any of the other ones while we were live. Sometimes I miss that. All right, we're good. So, hmm, you know what? I can go ahead and open up a piece of mail. I like to do that. Might be an early stream. Let's see. If I can reach over here. Actually, we have we have some already open mail that I keep intending to go through, and I never do. Let's get it over here. This set right here. I keep wanting to go through this. Keep saying we're going to look at this. Cut that Charizard. Oh man, what if I did that? What if I made a video where I chopped up my shiny Charizard? Somebody would watch that. They'd be like, what? Somebody with a taste for masochism. They'd be like, yeah, cut that Charizard. Oh, it feels so good. I pulled a $10 Yu-Gi-Oh card when all I wanted was my God cards. What? So here we go, let's see how these are doing. Okay, scuffs all over the card. That's a light played Sabrina's Alakazam. First edition, Dark Weezing. It's from the Team Rocket set, my favorite set. This was a uh, card lot that I purchased. Holy snap. Okay, no, there are, there's very light scuffing on Dark Weezing. He's actually in, I would describe him as near mint. Very good. Dark Arbok, as if I didn't have enough of these. You guys know in my folder I have a whole book of these. Gotta love the skipping. What are you talking about? Okay, here we go. I don't know what you mean. Slash lag. So this Dark Arbok is in light played condition. It's got scuffing all over the card. All over the hollow. Dark Hypno. There we 
go. Yep, he's got scuffing. The scuffing's really not bad. So the card, some scuffing just ruins the holographic. And then other scuffing is so light that it doesn't really matter too much. You can enjoy the card regardless. That's Dark Hypno. I had a Team Rocket Hollow Steelix and it was my favorite card. Well, I don't think that's true. Maybe you mean Team Rocket Returns. Is there a Team Rocket Returns Steelix? The actual Team Rocket set doesn't have a Steelix in it. Do you know when Gen X cards are coming out? They're coming out very soon. They're coming out very, very soon. You can already buy collection boxes at your local stores. I gotta purchase more of these, unfortunately. They're actually kind of expensive, too. I was looking through my old cards and I have a dark golem, a dark gloom, I'm sorry. I don't know if you need it or not, but I'll give it to you if you want it. I don't know card collecting very well, but it's in decent condition. Hey man, you wanna send me a free card? I'm not gonna turn it down. <laughs> The cheapest way to ship a single card is to send it in a letter. So you put it in a top holder like this, you put it in a sleeve like this, and then into the top loader, and then you, here, I'll show you real fast. So if you want to ship a single card to somebody, you need an envelope like this, and the card goes in here. You put a little piece of tape here if you don't want the card to shift around. You close this up, you can put a little piece of tape here if you don't want it to open up. And you put my address here. You can find my address in the description of the video. And then the return address goes up here and a stamp goes over here. And these are stamps. Uh, you just buy them from your local post office. You just put a stamp right there. So that's how you send a letter. It's funny. I actually had to look up how to send a letter because sending letters was what our grandparents did. We don't do that. <laughs> so when I got into shipping these cards, I had to go back and learn. It's pretty funny. It's like bouncing a checkbook. Nobody does that stuff that people don't do from a long time ago but in order to ship these cards i actually had to learn how to send a letter so i was like well <laughs> it's not too hard to learn you just google it all things are pretty easy these days to learn this card's in worse condition it's got a, a bend here very light bend silvering and uh more scuffing than the other cards dark hypno one of my favorite all-time cards love that card Ends in 14 minutes. Charizard base set, unlimited, rare holographic card. Looks like I was watching something on eBay. It's funny, I can be live and eBay still sends me notifications. It's like, uh, don't worry about your live stream, worry about eBay. What does it think I'm going to do? Like, stop the live stream to go bid? <laughs> so funny. Uh, this one's, uh, it looks decent, but the scuffing's just a little heavier than the other ones we had. Wes Kiva says, just got the notification for this stream from YouTube. Yeah, YouTube likes to delay. I think YouTube likes to wait and see if anyone's actually watching the stream uh, before they send out notifications. I'm not sure. There, there must, must be some complex algorithm that decides when to tell people that I'm live. All right. And of course, if you want to know when I go live more consistently, the best way to do that is to ring the bell button. And I, I believe YouTube will warn you ahead of time. He was in similar condition to the others. Let's check out this Dark Hypno. Is this enough Dark Hypnos? I don't think it's enough. How's it going, Oofer McDoofer? Oofer McDoofer. All right, this one has silvering on the side. Similar scuffing to the other Dark Hypnos. These are all in uh, light played, excellent condition, I would say. What do we got left? Dark Slowbro. How's it going, Christian Bloss? Names I'm recognizing. I got a reverse hollow basculin. It's probably worth like two cents. That's right. It kind of is. But on eBay, you couldn't buy them for that much because uh, shipping costs and, and listing costs, the seller never sells them that cheap. It's really a nice card. It's a pity that it has so much scuffing on the hollow. Another light play to excellent condition. Dark slow, bro. Come on now. How's this placed in? Come on now. There it goes. I'm ahead off. See you later, fans perspective. Ooh, this one's scuffed up real bad. That one had that one's definitely light played. Next pack. Dark slow bro, huh? Well this one's nice. Do a hand reveal. 
What are you talking about? This is a hand reveal. Dark slow bro again. All right. We'll just open this real slowly. Scuffing on that one as well. I just checked. It's worth 50 cents. <laughs> When are you reposting your foot reveal? <laughs> Dark Dug Trio, another card from the Team Rocket set. So this Dark Dug Trio, just like the other cards you were seeing, they're from this guy, this booster box. I really think these vintage cards are very collectible because they're out of print. They're the original sets, the original Pokemon card sets before Jim Challenge and Neo came along. You had you had Ro you had Rocket, Fossil, Jungle, and Base, and Base Set Two, but nobody liked Base Set Two in my opinion. Base Set Two was kind of weird. You're like, oh, they're just reprinting the same card. Will you be streaming Monster Hunter World tomorrow? Yes, I will. So I looked into what cards I had as a kid to see what what kind of worth they would have. They would be worth over 10000 Damn. That's a lot of money, man. Ooh. Oh, no. Okay. So I just had to tilt this right to see the scuffs. That was not, really not bad, though. I, I'm, I'm decently pleased with these cards. They're all in very... Um, you know, I wouldn't really want a card if it was in heavy played condition. So light played is probably my limit for collecting a card. I don't think heavy played is... You know, I wouldn't display it on a shelf. I'd be like, ah, I want a better one. So light plate cards are acceptable. My cousin stole them and pawned them off for like a hundred bucks. Ah, oh, that sucks. And the last cat card in the lot was Erica's Vile Plume. I've got a few of these now. I believe this is from the Gym Hero set. See, the Gym Hero set and the Neo set sets came out, and it had a different feeling at that time when you were collecting cards. By the time Gym Heroes, Gym Challenge, and the three Neo sets came out, uh, although the cards were still very impressive to look at, you could tell right away they didn't feel vintage the way the other cards were feeling vintage, right? The other cards felt like the original sets, these cards here. Uh, but back then, they were still being printed by Wizards of the Coast, so today they get treated like they're vintage cards, but they just, they just have a slightly different feel to them. I still enjoy them immensely. I like the Sabrina's Gengar a lot. Uh, Blaine's Moltres is really good. Uh, Blaine's Charizard's really good. There's a Blaine's uh, uh, Arcanine that's really cool. Yeah, check that out. Beautiful. So Erica's Vaplum. You know what I think we ought to do now? I'll move these over here to the side. Flareon. Oops. Right you. Just kind of move these to the side. And I'm going to grab my big black folder. Okay, actually, let's move this Flareon and write you completely safely off to the side. I don't want any mistakes made with them. Drag my camera back. Far back as it will go. Okay. So these were the cards we just went through. Dark Dug Trios, Dark Slow Bros, Dark Hypnos, Dark Arbok, Dark Weezing, Sabrina Sakazam. So we're going to take this Dark Arbok. We're going to start putting these into the big black folder. All right, so he can go in here. Okay. Looks like I have a bunch of the Hypnos here. Look out, there's a snake. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, you're talking about Arbok. All right, so here's the Hypnos over here. There you go, Dark Hypno. Snake, snake. There's room for three more Hypnos. Actually, four if we remove that Sabrina's Hypno down there, which we're going to. All right, you're out. You don't even belong in here. You're not even... Get them. Okay. And there's three at the top. So we have a full sheet of dark hypnos. Just scooch these back a little bit so 
sorry. Uh, my camera's going to fall if I'm not careful here. Scooch this forward again. <laughs> Working with very limited space. I hope you appreciate that. All right, and the last dark hypno. Come on, there it goes. All right, he's in. It's a whole sheet of dark hypnos. See that? All right. Very good. Oh, come on, man. Dark duck trios. We got a bunch of them. If Game Condoms pulls a Steelix, I may buy it for the memories and to support him. Well, believe it or not, I do have some Steelixes, and I can show you in the live stream if you would like. I have a very collectible Steelix if you'd like him. Well, he's a uh, by collectible, I mean he's already PSA graded. So if you like to collect Steelixes, I have a fair priced Steelix you can have. Get that dark tart duck trio in there. Look at that. Okay, and then where are my slow bros? I don't think I have a page of slow bros. In fact, I do not. Oh, here they are. They're at the very back. Do I have any more of those? Nope. Okay, now for the uh, dark wheezing. Where was he? He was back this way. Rainbow energy, rocket's trap. Here it is, dark wheezing. You'd be surprised. I don't actually have a lot of these dark wheezings because, I don't know, I'm just not as motivated to buy them. Saul Crew says, that's an expensive binder. That's right. It's a very expensive binder. Place this over here. This is one very expensive binder. Let's see, do I have um, Dragonite? I don't think I have Dragonite. Oh, I don't have Dragonite. You know why? Because I pulled them out. Yeah, so hold on. So here, I could have a page started for Dark Charizards. Check this out. One, two, three, four for the Dark Charizards. There's a Blastoise not in there. Sabrina's Gengar, Rocket Zapdos, the Dark Dragonite. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, here's another dark slowbro. Let's put him in. Let's just put him away for now. Here's a dark Marchamp. Oops, we got a first edition dark Blastoise. We'll put these guys in too. Why not? We're just filling the binder up a little bit. You know, I, I get to look at these cards every day, but I don't need so many out all the time. So let's get back through these pages. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Bump in the Night says, cut the Charizard. You wish. You wish. You make a $60 donation, and I will cut a card of your choice. Of sixty dollars or more. <laughs> Gosh, I guess if somebody wanted to, I could like. <laughs> you could order a jungle pack and have me destroy it in front of everyone for sixty-five dollars because it's your pack. <laughs> that would be pretty wild. I can get this dark slower up here. Oh, that looks so good. Actually, what other dark cards do I have in this pack pile right now? So the Charizards, they'll stay out. Stay out. I like looking at the, the dark Blastoise. They'll stay out. I like to look at the good ones. Right, your Eevee. Just kind of cleaning up my cards right now, I guess. <laughs> Come on now. Giovanni's Persian. Cards are sticking to each other because I'm always compressing them. Good night, Alucard Prime. You have a good night, man. Come on, now don't stick. Kangaskhan, what, what do we got? What do we got? Here's that Dragonite. It's what you want to pull in the fossil set. It's the first edition or the uh, holographic Dragonite. That's what I'm trying to say. Oops. Spilt, falling apart in my hands. Hold on, we got Dark Vile Plume, Dark Magneton, Dark Arbok. Let's keep the Dark Arbok. We don't have room for him anyways in here. Himonchan, Gyarados. Dark Gyarados, we'll put him in. We have Dark Gyarados again, Dark Dugtrio, we have Dark Hypno, Dark Weezing, Dark Machamp. We'll put the Dark Dragonite in, I think. Keep the Dark Charizard out. 
Another Dark Hypno. Wow. Man. We have so many cards, man. All right. Woo. I'm going to have to create a new page for the Dark Dragonites, probably. There we go. The Raichus. Raichus are a valuable card in this set. All right, so we got a non hollow Dark Moth Champ, right? Yeah, we do. Let's get them in here. I don't really like to display the non hollow ones as much, but I don't know why. The holographic ones are prettier. It's shiny. Ooh, <laughs> I'm like a bird. That's why I like to say when people like jewelry and stuff, something shiny, I was always like, yeah, birds like shiny stuff too. That's how dumb it is to collect something shiny. But here I am, a hypocrite, collecting shiny uh, Pokemon cards. <laughs> Got a lot of card destroying fetishes. What? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, well, also, if you like to destroy cards, I'm going to have some cheaper packs coming in from uh, Sun and Moon. And you could probably order one pack to be destroyed as well if you wanted to do that. Could be like a mystery pack, right? So let's say you bought a pack for $4 Sun and Moon and you're like, destroy it. I would take my scissors and I'd chop it up and then we could see what you actually would have gotten in there. And it would be like masochism. <laughs> We go let's see dark wheezing my dark wheezing page dark gold bat holographic beautiful card it really is place him in the page okay and these cards could have been in here the whole time i just like to hold them and look at them which is why you collect pokemon cards the dark foul plume I get the, we'll open up some mail in a minute, by the way, guys. So if you're wondering what we're going to do next, I got a piece of mail to open. So we'll be doing that next. Dark Duck Trail. I'm, I'm really concerned about having something to do for tomorrow night. Now, hold on. Is this going to fit? What's going on here? I hate it when that happens. I don't think this is my... I think this is someone else's penny sleeve because it doesn't fit into the Ultra Pro. Let's try this one. Are the Pokemon Shield Streams gone for good? No, not necessarily. It's just that, man, when I stream Monster Hunter, I get such a good audience because I'm known for Monster Hunter. And uh, when I'm streaming the Pokemon Pokemon stuff, I really don't get a good audience. I get a very mediocre audience. I mean, even like two hours into the stream, we're barely reaching 200 viewers. And that's because I'm not known for Pokemon. So it's just kind of uh, something I'll do when I feel like it, I guess. Uh, I guess it would help if I knew what kind of activities there were to work on. Uh, maybe, maybe like if Pokemon has a DLC, that'll certainly be a reason to return and play all of that. And Dark Dragonite, we don't really have a page for Dark Dragonite. I guess we could start a new page for like Dragonite and Charizard. Maybe we should do that. Looks like we got a page right here. So I'll, I'll slide him in here. Okay. Perfect. Actually, you know what I'd like to do is remove all these common uncommon cards. I don't feel like they deserve to be saved in here. How much money do you think you've spent on all these cards? A lot. Um, I buy them very carefully. So I don't buy them unless I think the price is right on them. And then I'm just going to leave them in this binder for years and years. You know how you guys are like saying, oh man, I used to have cards when I was a kid. You know how you guys say that? And then you're like, oh, if only I had that binder, it'd be worth thousands of dollars. 20 years from now, this binder is going to be worth thousands of dollars. That's what's going to happen. I'm just going to store these cards in here. And no, I'm not going to sell them to my friend. And I'm not going to sell them to a pawn shop. I'm not going to sell them in a garage sale. Uh, what I'm going to do is, a long time from now, I'm going to sell these for their correct price. And it's going to make me a ton of money. Because I'm good at selling cards. Hey, look at all this. Beautiful. I love the Magneton page. I don't know if you guys knew this. Big fan of Mag Magneton. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. Magneton. I especially like the dark Magneton, the way he looks. Yeah, here we are. That's a cool design. I love the I love the design of it. It's so shiny. <laughs> like I said, a hypocrite. I make fun of people for liking shiny things, but I like shiny things. See, we could put a page of dark Charizards in, probably. Venusaur, dark Blastoise. 
So maybe it's time to start reserving room in this folder for the uh, gym challenge stuff. You need to put a safe, you need a big safe to put this binder in. Yeah, I don't know how much it's worth at the moment, but it's gotta be worth a couple hundred dollars. I don't know if it's worth a thousand dollars yet, but it's gotta be worth a couple hundred. I already went through this, right? Mr. Mime, Magneton, Chansey, Dragonite, the other Dragonite. <laughs> I yeah, got a lot of, here we go, Dark Ar all right, we don't have room for Dark Ar Arbok, I'd have to start a new page for him, should just start selling Dark Arbox. Yeah, we're done going through there, actually, there's a pile I didn't go through, but I don't think it has anything in it, this is my odd pile, I wish I could sell these cards, I, I uh, ought to, so I got some Japanese cards to get rid of, the Japanese rocket cards, these are all for sale, look at Damaged Pikachu, I don't know if he's worth anything, Japanese cards, I don't know what these are worth, they look cool. Oh yeah, some uh, trainer cards that I thought to sell, but I haven't listed them. It's a new month, so I get free listings again. So I'll probably list a lot of these at some point. But I always list what I think is most important to list first. First, so oh yeah, this is actually a valuable card. This is like Red's Challenge or something like that. I can't remember Red and Pikachu. Yeah, that one's actually a good card. Yeah, I like this right on. It's very old. It's from 2005. The Golem is from 2006. This Metagross is from. 2013. Okay, he's not too old. This guy's from 2003. He's from the e-reader card sets. Uh, this is Japanese metal energy from like the Neo set, Neo Genesis. So some of these are real old. Oh, holographic charger. Put him at the top. He looks really nice. We got a bunch of Japanese dark cards. These are for sale. So yeah, I got to get rid of those sometime. All right. How about opening another piece of mail? I think we should do that next. Close this very carefully. We want to make sure all the cards are laying flat when we close the binder. Oof, that's heavy. That is real heavy. Get these in the background again. These are for Sam, remember? <laughs> for those of you who missed that, we opened up some vintage packs for Sam and he got some good pulls. All right, next piece of mail. Next piece of mail. Looks like it's got a tab right there. I'm just going to ignore that, though. I like to recycle these bags, too. So when I get a bag like this, I don't just throw it away. How's it going, Aiden? He says, new viewer. I'm glad you're here, man. When I get a bag like, bag like this, I, uh, I save it, and I ship cards back out with it so that it doesn't just go into a landfill right away. Okay, this looks like it might be PSA cards. Oh, PSA cards. The one guy mentioned he wanted a Steelix. Let me think about it for a minute. My best Steelix. I have a the Steelix you can have for 20 bucks if you want them. Should be in this pile. None of these. So just make sure it's none of those. Must be the pile next to it. Or is it? Dark R box, Cedra. I got some decent PSA cards for sale. All right, these are all still Team Rocket. Must be in the last pile then. I've touched the pile, so I kind of forget how I organized them, you know? Last Toys Blaziken. That's half the pile. Let's get the second half of the pile. Oof. Necrozma. Here it is. Got him. I had to go digging for him, didn't I? Put that away. And actually, he's not $20. He's $23. Because it's $3 shipping. Sorry about that. I should have said that earlier. So here it is. So if you're interested in a nice Steelix, this Steelix is already... It's from 2016. So this card is already almost four years old. It's got a perfect grade, PSA 10, and is a Steelix EX. So if you're interested in that, that's $23. Let me go ahead and put him in a nice little sleeve. I didn't realize he wasn't in one. He's got a perfect grade. Oh, not this bag. No, that, that's not the good one. Where's the good bag? Did I move it? Might have moved it. Oh, was it underneath? Oh, it's underneath. Hold on, I got this. I'm so sorry. I moved everything when I got this shelf. 
I had to move everything around. Here we go. Yeah, so if you're interested in this Steelix, 23 bucks. Somebody said he wanted a Steelix. And I got you one. It's a, it's a flawless card. Here it is. Perfect. Place them back in the stack. It's okay if you change your mind. He'll always be for sale. See, that's, that's the nice thing about the PSA cards. They're not going anywhere. Their grade's not going to change, right? They're sealed. They're like in a tomb. He's in a plastic tomb, this Blaine's Charizard. Nothing's going to happen to him. And uh, that's why the PSA cards are nice. So it's a little bit different for them. All right, let's get this mail open. There we go. I'm so happy that Sam got that Flareon and Raichu. That looks so good back there. I like to see it when you guys get good pulls. Mail time. That's right. <laughs> Some people do a really good job protecting their cards. Here we go. Oh, man. When did I buy this? I must have bought this a while ago. This must have been sitting in my mail pile for a while. Oh, we just opened a very expensive piece of mail. This is PSA 10, first edition, holographic Dark Dragonite. One of the most expensive cards you can pull from the Team Rocket set. Team Rocket set is 20 years old. Get this off there. A little smudge on the screen. Let's see if I can wash that off real fast. Well, and it didn't come off. I don't really care. You can tell by the number that it wasn't graded too long ago. That's nice. That's another thing that's nice, right? You get a cleaner looking label up here. That's one of the things that I like. Looks like a flawless card. How about the back? I would say that the centering is actually off. You can kind of tell. This band on the right is thinner than the band on the left, but people said that the centering doesn't matter as much to PSA. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I can accept that, as long as the card looks beautiful. And, I, I you know, as long as the hollow has no print lines and the, the edges are pretty clean, I don't mind. Beautiful card, this one. So if you, wanna, if you wanted to buy this card for me right now, I would sell it to you for about $1,010 if I wanted to get rid of it. I don't even want to get rid of it. You know, it's mine now. That's the funny thing. You know, people ask, like, what is a card worth? And there's kind of an established market where you can go buy a card. But the funny thing is, the rarer and more collectible a card becomes, it's harder to really determine the price because it depends on if the people who own the cards actually want to sell them. See? It's not like a normal good. It's not like buying a car. It's not like buying a food or clothing. Collectibles are strange. In order for you to buy this, it's not about whether you can afford to buy it. It's about whether I want to give it up. And when there's a limited number or something, it becomes very valuable. So this goes into my nice pile um, with the Blaine's Charizard, all these other cards. That goes into my nice pile. He's going to stay there for a long time. He's, a, he's like an investment card. All right. <laughs> um... Man, that was a big piece of mail. I didn't even know I had them there. This is We're basically at the bottom of my mail pile. I've got two pieces of mail left because I haven't been buying so much. Uh, so we've been working down the mail pile faster than I've been receiving mail. So we got two pieces of mail left. And tomorrow, if I don't get any kind of booster packs in the mail, <laughs> I don't have anything to do for tomorrow's uh, live stream. So I don't know. Maybe I'll be forced to go to the store and pick something up. I don't want to. Oh, actually, no, I have a little bit more mail. It looks like it fell down the sun. <laughs> Oh, my cat must have knocked my mail down. Oh, well. When are the 100 plus tins coming? I received an email from Target that they have been shipped. I imagine they will arrive in five okay. days. So maybe Friday, maybe, um, wait, what's today? Sunday. So yeah, maybe Friday, I would bet. Otherwise, probably next week, Monday. If I were Target, I wouldn't spend heavy money on the shipping for something like that. What do we have here? Follow us on Instagram. Whoa. So, before I give them a shout out, because I don't know if I want to, I want to read what the message actually says. Oh. 
okay. So basically, basically they just want to advertise their store because, you know, if you have a Pokemon card store, it is in your interest for people to go to the store rather than buy from you on eBay. Because eBay charges you an eBay fee and there's a final value fee and it all adds up really fast. So we got three additional game cards. This is the Dollar Tree Booster Pack. I really appreciate that. I didn't buy that, so they gave that to me. Really appreciate that. Actually, you know what? I will read it. So I wasn't going to read the message, but you know what? They included the little free thing. We got we to gotta read it for them. So Pokemon Cards Forever 3488 on Instagram. Thanks, man. Really cool. And then here's what we actually purchased. Oh, cool. So they, they used... Oops. They used to... Two of these guys like cardboard. I'd never thought to do that. That's actually very clever. So you could do this and hold the two, hold the cards in between them. Yeah, that's clever actually. I didn't think of that. I got a box of cardboard cutups that I use, uh, but that works too. That's kind of expensive actually to do it that other way. I think the cardboard's cheaper. We got a rubber band. I'll save the rubber band for shipping as well. So this is very faded. Is it just me? This looks pretty faded. This is Japanese Grimer, Japanese Dragonair, Holographic Erica's Vile Plume, and it is in very bad condition. I don't know if I would have purchased this. So this is what I'd call a heavy, heavily played card. It has some notches down here. Uh, they're not like bends, but they're like damage on the card. Uh, what do we have here? Brock's Rhydon. Okay, he's, he's in better condition, but you can tell he's got a little notch there and a little notch there. Indentation, the dents. There we go, that's a better word. They have dents in the card. Not the same as a bend. This is a bend. So the card's been bent here. Uh, and that's Rocket's... Um, I don't know what that one's called. He, uh, this is from the gym set. Here's a Erica's Clefairy. Here's a bent Lieutenant Surge's Firo. Here's a very bent Rocket Zapdos. And here is a very bent Sabrina's Feninat. Hmm. I feel like I probably didn't shop this hard enough because I don't know if I would have bought these unless I got some unusually good deal on them. Mm. I will double check to see how much I paid for them. If I paid a if I paid a, a heavily played price for them, that's fine. But I'm worried that I paid a lightly played price for them. I'll set them back here for now. At least the Rocket Zapdos looks very good. Set them back here. I'll check that listing. I'll make sure that they listed it appropriately. You know, I've been buying a lot of things on eBay, and my experience with it has been that you get ripped off very quickly if you're not, uh, what's the right word? Not adamant. If you're not very, um, hmm, the word's on the tip of my tongue. But you have to work really hard not to be ripped off because a lot of sellers will sell their card as lightly played when the card's clearly heavily played to damaged. So if we go back to the listing from those cards and it doesn't say slip a tit, <laughs> thanks Sparks for your, uh, but yeah, if we go back and it doesn't say heavily played to damaged on it, I'm going to tell them that they didn't describe their cards correctly. Okay, we actually have more mail. I'm gonna go ahead and open up another one. I don't wanna end there. Let's grab another one. How about this one right here? Vigilant. Thank you, Chase. That is the exact word I was looking for. Vigilant. You have to be vigilant. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I bought some bad Blastoises, and I, I told them, like, hey, I, you know, your description says nothing about it being warped to hell. And, you know, they had to give me a refund. Because that's exactly how it works. That's how it's supposed to work. You got to tell people what they're buying. Sellers... They, they don't always want to trick you. Sometimes sometimes the reason they don't explain their card correctly is because, you know, it's too much effort to add all the detail to the listing. It actually takes work. Next pack. Let's see. So here's another piece of mail. These are clearly going to be vintage cards. You can tell by the amount of wear on the back of the card. And uh, these are going to be in light play to, to uh, heavily played condition. Here we go. Knight of Queen, looking actually pretty good. King of Scon, also not that bad. A few more scuffs on it than I would have liked. Vile Plume, okay, Vile Plume's very scuffed up. And Pidgeot, Pidgeot's not so bad. So these are like the cards you would hope to pull from that box right there. So Pidgeot's actually pretty valuable. I don't know if Vile Plume is. King of Scon's pretty valuable. Uh, and Knight of, Queen, Knight of Queen's okay. 
So yeah, you would hope to pull these cards from that box. In fact, um, where would I place this? I got a card I could show you. I had it gr uh, not graded. I looked at its value just the other day. No, I don't think it would be there. So would it be here? There it is. Oh, no, that's it's not that one. It's one like it. Oh, here it is it's at the bottom. Blech. So for those of you who are pulling cards out of this box, here's a card you would want to pull. Knight of Queen, PSA 10. See? Perfect condition. It's jungle. It's from the Unlimited set. This is one of the cards you could pull. And you'd be very happy if you pulled it and you pulled it in good condition. Yeah. Look at that. And you get all the other cards. So if you pulled a booster pack, it wouldn't just have Nido Queen in it. You would have all the other cards in it as well. Nice. So let's take a look at the conditions of these cards real fast from the mail. Oops. Yeah, I would call this light played. It's got scuffs here. It's got silvering on the side. It looks worn on the back. No dents or anything, though. It's presentable, basically. Place her over here. Oh, this King is gone. And the King is gone is beat up a little more. Still no dents on the card, but the scratches kind of... You can tell they're really strong scratches. There's quite a lot of them. Um, you know, I would describe this one more as heavily played just because I think it's less presentable. Some cards can get away, like if they have a, a darker background, you can kind of get away with your hollow scratches a little more. People don't care. Uh, but a, a card with a light background like this, the hollow scratches, I feel like they're more visible. So here's Pidgeot. And uh, similar to the Kangaskhan, it's got quite a few scratches, but none quite as deep as the Kangaskhan had. This one's like borderline between heavy played and light played. I think you could argue this is heavy played for the Pidgeot. I actually remember this auction now. What happened was it was a seller who was selling them one at a time, and uh, I told him I'd buy them all off him at the same time, and he gave me a good deal. Ooh, the Vile Plume. See, the Vile Plume's got to be in heavy plate condition as well, or even damaged. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm buying up some. Hopefully I did not pay too good of prices for those, because like the other set, that's actually pretty worn down. Wow, I got a lot of, I got a lot of top loaders. Okay. Should we wrap up here or should I open up one more piece of mail? You guys decide. Got these holographic rares. I'll place them over in this pile. Saw Cruz says one more. <laughs> Get this. This you shouldn't be in a hollow. This other Sabrina's Alkazam. Yeah, look at this. The start of my next holographic rares pile. It's only three cards in it now. <laughs> okay, so let's open up another piece of mail. Forgive me if my camera falls over. I'm trying to... I don't know how far this microphone will go. Can I reach this? Oh. Did I lie to you? No, we got, we got one more. You guys are lucky. One more piece of mail. Just one more. This is all we have left. So tomorrow I have to receive something in the mail in order to have something to open for you. I appreciate you guys enjoying the stream. We'll keep these live streams going for the foreseeable future. So consider subscribing to the channel if you want to help me out. Oh, I can see the card within. <laughs> right now, the channel is quite small. I don't have that many subscribers. So actually, unlike my main, my, my large channel, my gaming channel, I don't really care if people subscribe or not. But on the small channel, I really would appreciate it because it, it tells other people that, yeah, you know, there's a channel where people actually are watching the content. So subscribes really do help early on in a channel's life. Wow, this is wrapped really tight with the shrink wrap. Try this. Here we go. <laughs> All right, now he's got a piece of tape on the, the top. Ruben said, that's the, surprising. This is a pretty good and entertaining channel. Well, we only started about five months ago. So it's been growing slowly but steadily. 
and it, it helps early on if uh, if you guys subscribe it helps a lot actually you know if I had a hundred thousand subs here like I did on my main channel it's not such a big deal but people kind of you know they kind of judge your channel based on how large you are and early on if your channel only has like a thousand five hundred subs they go eh, he probably doesn't make much but the truth is I put out content every day they don't know that they don't know that just by judging the number of subs I have Saw Crew says it's been five months already. Has it? We're entering uh, December, right? December, November, October, September, August. I think I started in August. Pretty sure I started in August. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> so the Brox ride on is actually really nice. How about the back of the card? Yeah, but the card's nice too. So this is, I would describe this as about near mint. Yeah, we've been going. We've been chugging along. It's been a while. Okay, we're all done. I don't know if you guys want to talk about anything or see any of my collection at all. What do you guys want to do? Place this down here. Should we wrap up? <laughs> wow, we've been going for an hour and six minutes. Wes Kiva says, I'm not a big fan of Pokemon anymore, but you are truly wonderful and fun to watch along with being able to listen. Well, it's funny because I knew that during the code... Uh, Oh, right. Wes Kiba says, see more Steelix. Right. Oh, here's the uh, Steelix card you were interested in. I'll show you that again. So we have the Steelix. The Raichu and the Flareon. He said, show us your collection. Probably the thing I'm most proud of in my collection is actually this booster box. So that's the uh, first edition. Uh, you guys have seen this a few times if you've been on this channel. Uh, and... I really, truly believe that the booster boxes are, are, I don't know, they're very, very collectible because they have like this status, right? So a booster box is either sealed or it's not sealed. And the sealed booster boxes, they carry like this aura of, ooh, please open me. I'm a Pandora's box of cards you could be getting. So they have like this temptation to them that, so Blaine's Charizard over here, he doesn't have that. He's just a very good card and you go, oh, I want that because I like Blaine's Charizard. But this has like a question mark on it, like, ooh, what are the gifts inside of here? You're going to find all the cards you ever wanted if you just open me up. So it's almost like this thing where you have to stop yourself from opening it all the time. And that's one of the reasons why I like the booster boxes. Uh, and opening the booster boxes attracts an audience. People like to watch these get open. Obviously, we opened up the uh, fossil and the jungle booster boxes yesterday. So, and then of course, the Rocket, Team Rocket is my favorite uh, set. My favorite Pokemon card set. That's why I have so many of them. How's it going, Dark Lord Pongo? You're at, you're at the end of the stream, man. I was just telling people what they would like to see. Some people were saying, let's see your collection. Uh, we could do that. I could show you. Here are some cards that... Uh, I'll show you some modern cards that I'm not going to sell. These are cards I'm just holding on to. I don't really know what will happen to them. It might be smarter to sell them. Uh, but these are the cards I have. These are modern cards. Do you have any giant cards? I do, and they're for sale if you want them, and you could have them. If you want to buy them all, I'll sell them to you right now, $2 each. I think their real price is like 6 to $12, but I just have a bunch of them. So, because I opened those collector's boxes, remember that? So I got a bunch of cards, and I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six. I got six cards at least. Yeah, you could have them all for 12 bucks if you wanted them. Otherwise, maybe I'll sell them on eBay for like four bucks a piece. I do try to get rid of my cards quickly rather than turning a big profit on them. Because for me, it's, it's not all about profit. For me, it's about for me it's about getting rid of the cards in time to buy some, yeah, 12 plus shipping, like uh, $4 for shipping. So getting rid of the cards quickly allows me to move on to the next set of cards. And this allows me to create... Uh, content for you guys so that's very there's kind of like a flow an in and out flow that has to occur or else I'm just digging myself in a hole, hole financially but then there are some cards that I buy and I, I'm actually just spending my real money on them here we go so Mew, Mewtwo and Mew this is from Unified Minds the best card you can pull right I'm very interested in the best cards you can pull from each set I think that they're unusually collectible oh four dollars is domestic shipping you're right Sora Here's the Den, the Denny or the Den. I don't know how to pronounce it. He's been a really, really popular card in the competitive tournaments, and he just looks so good. So I've got PSA 10 to Denny, 
Darkrai. I actually just think Darkrai looks cool. That's it. I, I've never even used him before. He, he came out, you know, when I was done playing the games, he came out. Sorry, I might have missed a question there. That's Darkrai. Dragonite. Uh, like many of you, I just think Dragonite's kind of cool. So I have a Dragonite. Tyranitar is actually one of my all-time favorite Pokemon. Da Dene. Da Dene. Okay, thank you. Oofer McDoofer correcting my pronunciations here. So this is a PSA Tyranitar from the Lost Thunder set. Big fan of Tyranitar. Now you guys know my favorite Pokemon is Shuckle. So there is actually a Rainbow Rare Shuckle from Lost Thunder. And I had to have them. So I got one, two, three of them. <laughs> he actually wasn't that expensive even. Um, I don't know. He's kind of a niche card. I don't think I had as much competition to obtain him. These guys, I think, are highly collectible. I have two left. Uh, I, I Once, I had like seven of them, but I sold a bunch of them to you guys. I think this card is very collectible. It's, it's, a, it's a unique card where Mewtwo's inside of a, uh, you know, like the two where they're doing their experiments. Ruben says, my favorite card you have is Rainbow Mewtwo and Mew. Nice, man. But check him out. He's, he's textured here, and it looks so cool. Uh, the, and the... Uh, border is textured, and then you've got the inside is uh, not necessarily textured here. So it's just a really interestingly designed card. It's one of those cards where it's like, it's memorable, right? It's memorable. It has like a personality to it, I guess. And this one's for my wife. She likes Persian because she likes cats. Pretty pretty uh, uncomplicated for that last one. <laughs> so yeah, the, the shuckles are really nice. I've thought about signing the shuckles and selling these uh, for, you know, on my main channel. I got a large, for those of you who are completely new, I've got a large YouTube channel called The Game Economist, and I got like 100,000 subs over there. Would you be willing to sell one more of those? If so, how much? Uh, I might be willing to sell it, but it would be probably for an expensive amount, probably like 150. Aiden says, I get pet pulls in tins than anything else I open. I bought three tins and got four ultra rares. Well, we bought two tins today and we opened them, and all we got were... Um, GX cards, so the tins aren't a guaranteed win, I'd say. So those are my modern cards. And I got those really carefully. Any chance you'll sell the PSA Night of Queen? Yes, the PSA Night of Queen is for sale, actually. I would have to look up the price. Actually, I might know it. The price for the Night of Queen is $100. Yeah, let me put it on display real fast. Some cards I wrote the price on the back. Not all cards I did that though, so it was easy to know her price. All right. So Knight of Queen. These are my, this is another thing that I'm not willing to sell. So I'm working on a PSA 10 Team Rocket collection. Am I for sale? <laughs> my wife will want to know how much. <laughs> so <laughs> she'll say if it's enough. This is my favorite unboxing channel. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I do. So Dark Charizard. Dark Dragonite. These are all PSA 10, and they're all first edition. So we have Dark Dragonite, Dark Blastoise, Dark Raichu. Those are the expensive four, but actually I'm lying to you. They're not the most expensive. I, I've been doing research on this set. The most expensive card in the Team Rocket PSA 10 set is the Dark Magneton, my favorite Pokemon. And nobody has... There's like 13 of them, I think, in existence. They're a low population PSA 10 card because... Every time you pull him in a booster box, he has a print line error. So nobody has him. And there's like 13 people who own him. And I wish I could obtain one. I'd sell him my left nut. So Dark Vile Plume, Dark Slowbro, Dark Hypno. I have an extra Dark Hypno, actually. Maybe I should put him up for sale. Dark Arbok, Dark Weezing. Here comes Team Rocket and Dark Dugtrio. There's a number of uh, PSA 10 first edition cards I'm missing. But, you know, I don't really... I don't really rush out to buy them. I just kind of take it real slow. I got a lot of other things cooking, right? Like, so I bought all those tins instead. I could have been working on my personal collection or I could be spending money on things that are going to create content for the channel. And so I actually focus more on my ability to, to produce content for you guys because that's what makes it entertaining. So I'm more interested in establish... Oh, Westkiba says, I'm sending you a message in Discord for the Steelix. So Westkiba, if you're interested in the Steelix, I think we said like 20... Was it 23 or 24? I can't remember. Um, in order to pay for it, all you have to do 
is go to the description of the live stream. There's a link for Streamlabs. If you click on that, it'll take credit card and it'll take PayPal. So you can use either of those. And when you make a payment through that, it should make a noise on my laptop so I know a payment's come through and I'll ship it tonight. Ruben, what? Oh, so I showed you my PSA 10 collection. Um, this is kind of like a, I consider this pile kind of like an investment pile. Uh, so these are cards I'm invested in and the point of them is to just hold them and I expect their value to go up. So this is like my investment pile. Uh, all cards technically will go up in value in my opinion, but these cards especially I think will go up faster. Saul Cruz says, what other cards are you selling? I actually have a huge pile of them, so I'll, I'll show you that in a moment if you'd like. So my investment pile is Blaine's Charizard, Dark Charizard, Dark Dragonite, we just added him. Another Dark Charizard, that's a 10. Here's a 10, Shining Kabutops. That's a 9. He's a 9. 8. Look at this Pichu. This is a unlimited Pichu. There's only like 30 of these in existence. Okay, so, I, you know, do research on population. So if you buy a card that has a huge population, then the card has to have equally huge demand to be worth it. He says, I think your collection can slot. Well, I've been working on it for five months, haven't I? Rocket Zapdos is just one of my favorite cards. I love Rocket cards. So with the Gym Challenge, you got the Team Rocket cards. Rocket Zapdos just looks so cool. I sent one into PSA to be graded. Might come back a 9 or an 8 even, but I'm hoping it comes back a 10. Oh man, if it comes back a 10. Because I, I paid $50 for the raw card. If it comes back at 10, I'll have made a bunch of money. Uh, a Dark Charizard PSA 6 and a non-holographic Dark Charizard. I might sell this one. I'm not sure. So that's my investment pile. It just sits around. I got cards that I buy because I like them. And I got cards that I buy because I think that over time they'll move up in price. Cards that are for sale, huh? Excuse me. So let me show you. These cards are especially for sale. Start up here. So I remember buying this card. I bought him because of how good he looked. This is a PSA 10 Duskull from the e-reader time. So this is actually a very old card. It says here it came in 2003. So this card is actually roughly 17 years old, right? We're moving into 2020. So about 17 years old for this card. Now this isn't a rare card, it's actually a common, but it came back a perfect 10 and there's a very low population for this card. And look at the artwork on that card. So you can't see it, I don't know how well you can see it in the camera, but he's just scribbled, he's, he's the drawing's like scribbles, like a doodle, it's really nice. He says, is there XY booster that you think will be good to invest in? I know nothing about the XY sets. So I, I collected, when I was a kid, all the way up to Neo. Okay, so I had Base, Fossil, Jungle, Team Rocket, Gym Hero, Gym Challenge, and then all the Neo sets, right? Um, and then I stopped because, you know, I was like, I was getting a little older. I was, I was having trouble with my home, and I left, I left my home, and I left my cars behind. Got back into it recently during Sun and Moon. So for the X and Y sets, I don't actually know a lot. Okay, so that's Duskull. He's for sale. Here's Dark Arbok. It's a first edition. PSA 9, non-holographic. Here's a really cool card. So this is from Burning Shadows and is a reverse hollow Cedra. So if you're a fan of Cedra, I don't know who is actually. I think girls like Cedra generally, don't they? It seems like one of the things my sisters would have bought. <laughs> but it's a PSA 10. So a, you know, if you're trying to have a complete collection of Burning Shadows, then you probably would want this card. And why would you want a complete collection of Burning Shadows? That's because the Rainbow Rare Charizard uh, comes in the Burning Shadow set. So the Burning Shadow set from the Sun and Moon era probably will be very collectible and somebody will want this card to complete their set eventually. Japanese Dark Dug Trio Holographic from Team Rocket. So the, the Team Rocket, I mean, I'm sorry, the vintage cards for Japan, they never had first edition. So there's no like first edition unlimited sets. It's just all one set. And this is just a perfect grade Dark Dug Trio. Uh, for me, I, I want to focus on the English cards. You can do Japanese cards, but I just don't like Japanese. You know, I'm not like one of those people who gets really excited about anime and Japanese language. So for a while, I was buying the Japanese cards, and then I kind of reached a point where I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to focus on English cards because it's better to focus on things you would collect yourself, I think. Here's a really nice one. 
This is PSA 10 first edition non-hollow dark Garbach. So for a complete PSA 10 first edition set, you would need this card, right? I'm putting the, I showed you this set over here to the left, uh, but that set, I'm just gonna focus on the holographic ones just because it's easier for me. You know, I don't, I don't want to ever want to have so many cards that I need an actual closet to store them all in. I just want a few stacks. Uh, but so, yeah, so I started making my collection smaller. But if you really wanted to finish a Team Rocket set, you would need this card. Same with this card. So, oh, actually, this one's holographic. Yeah, it says it up here, hollow. So this is a first edition holographic dark wheezing PSA 10. If you wanted to have a Team Rocket finished collection, you would need this one as well. Here's another Dark Arbok, Holographic, Unlimited, PSA 10. Uh, here's a first edition. I think this was a spare one. I think I bought two of them and I didn't need them both. Excuse me, PSA 10, Holographic, here comes Team Rocket. Another really nice card if you're looking to complete a uh, PSA 10 first edition uh, Team Rocket set. First edition, 10, Dark Mug. And... First edition, PSA 9, non-holographic dark gold bat. So there we go for that. That's part of the pile. It's the first half of that pile. And then we have, this is like, think of it like my odd pile. It's like a lot of odd cards in here. And I obtained them and now uh, they're for sale. And I, I don't mind sitting on them because they probably just go up in value. So this Fortress, he's from Neo Discovery, right? So he's like 19 years old, this card. He's an unlimited card. He's PSA 8. Dark Rocket, or I'm sorry, Team Rocket Dark Radicate. This is just a perfect 10. I actually already sold two of these. Yeah, somebody's already purchased some of these off of me. I used to have three of them. Got these Vile Plumes here. It's actually the same card twice. So PSA 9, first edition, non hollow Dark Vile Plumes. Here's a really nice card. How's it going, Rennie? This is a really nice card right here. This Charmander will very likely sell. It's a PS, uh, PSA 10. First edition Charmander. So people who love Charizard, and there's a lot of collectors who love Charizard, this is an important card for them because it's part of the Dark Char uh, Charizard evolution. I sold the Dark, Char uh, it's not called Dark Charmeleon, but uh, I sold the Team Rocket Charmeleon first edition PSA 10 for like 75 bucks. People really wanted it. These are all for sale, by the way. So uh, Saul was asking to see the ones that were for sale. Dark Doug Trio PSA 9 first edition, non hollow. Here's a nice card. So if you're looking to obtain PSA cards that you can put in like a display case, but you don't want to break the bank, this is exactly what I would do. Buy them PSA 8. Uh, don't worry about first edition, but get them, get the flashy ones, get the holographic ones. Whiskeyba says any Onyx. No, I don't think I have any Onyx. I'm trying to think what's the best Onyx in the game. Gosh, I don't think there's a lot of good Onyxes. There's probably a uh, there's probably a decent reverse reverse hollow Onyx somewhere, but I can't think of any. There's a Brox Onyx from the. Um, I probably have a Brox Onyx somewhere, but it would be raw, it'd be ungraded. Here's a unlimited Dark Arbok, unlimited Dark Magneton PSA eight. Ooh, again another Japanese card, and this is another perfect graded Japanese card. So it's a PSA ten holographic Dark Magneton. It's just simply the case that I decided. I will focus on the English cards rather than trying to have, because again, I don't want to like break the bank. I'm focusing on fewer cards for myself. Wes Giva says, sad day. Uh, well, you know, I don't have it open right now. Yeah, there's, I probably have a Brox Onyx, but I don't have them graded if you're looking for a graded one. So we have Volbeat from the e-reader series, PSA 10, very low population card. So somebody trying to complete their, their set of uh, X Sandstorm, they need this card, and that would be the reason to obtain it, or maybe you're the one trying to finish that collection. So we got Dark Machoke, Unlimited, PSA 10, and Diglett from the Team Rocket set, first edition, PSA 10. So lots of, uh, lots of cards that are here and there. They're just kind of all over the place, uh, and these have been listed on eBay already, and, you know, they sell off. I sell a card or two a day. Sometimes I sell... I, I prefer to sell on Discord. So I, in the Discord server, I actually have a lot of cards for sale and I update the list all the time. And that's because when I sell them directly to you, I don't have to pay eBay, which is really annoying. eBay's real nasty with their eBay seller fees. They take a lot of money. So those, those were mostly vintage. Why don't we look at some of the modern cards I have for sale? I have GX ones and then I have full arts. What do you guys want to see? The uh, full arts or the GXs? 
I'll let you guys pick. So I refresh this real fast. Dark Lord Ponga wants to see the GXs. Let's grab those. Saw so Cruz says both. Let's take a look at the full arts first. Seemed like people were more interested in those. Ah, this Dark Rye. <laughs> so that Dark Rye is actually hard to obtain. He, he's often not for sale. I don't know how many there are in existence, but uh, when I looked, there were only a few of them. And uh, yeah, so I had to buy one. He looks so good. Look at him. So I, I don't know why. I've never played him, but he just looks cool. So this Dark Rye, he's a full art. And, and keep in mind, this is from my for sale pile, okay? So if you have any interest in this, feel free to contact me about it on Discord or I could look up a price for you or something. So Espeon, this is, uh, the EV Evolutions always do well. EV Evolutions, they, they're just popular for some reason. For example, Flareon's the most popular card in the jungle set. Even though there's a lot of cool jungle cards, Flareon's the one that's most in demand. Hey, Game Economist, the link for Discord doesn't work. Just tried it again. Thank you, Saul Cruz. I will update that link. It's expired. Hmm. Let me do that. I'm going to update it right now while we're live. Man, why would it expired? That's really annoying. This would just take me a second. I should have... Uh, I would have done forever. One moment, all. Edit invite link. Expire after never. Max number of uses, no limit. Generate new link. Copy. All right, and now what I have to do is I have to go into the live stream that we have going right now. Wow, I am very close to breaking 100,000 on my main channel. I just need 300 subs and we have 100,000. So I'm hopping over to the card economist. Looks like we picked up some uh, subscribers from this actual live stream. What the heck? The uh, I'm looking at the thumbnail for this live stream, and it's a terrible thumbnail. Why the hell did it go with such a bad-looking thumbnail? Oh, no, it's not. All right, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and edit the description of this live stream. When I do this, if you hit the reload button, you should have a working Discord invite. All right, it's been updated. I'm going to hit the save button. All right, I've hit the save button. Why don't you go ahead and hit refresh on the page and see if the Discord invite works now. And I'll go ahead and return to this. Sorry about that, everybody. It's really nagging me that it wasn't working. So we're taking a look at the full arts. These are for sale. These are the full arts that I have for sale. Toxapex, a popular competitive, car uh, not card, popular competitive Pokemon for the actual games. Toxapex. Another, sh another uh, full art shuckle. I've thought about just keeping this one. Uh, but also, I have them for sale in case one of my fans wants a Shuckle. So this is a PSA 9 Shuckle. It's not so expensive. Not as expensive as the 10s. Another Espeon. So I actually had two of them. The new link works. Oh, thank you so much, Saul Cruz. Must Maserva says, I don't know if I said your name right. If only the Toxapex was a 10. Well, you're going to see some 10s, but you're also going to see some 9s in this pile. So we have a 9, Feromosa, and Buzzwool. And we have Terminator. <laughs> Look at this. I actually really like the way this Pokemon looks. He reminds me of a certain type of turtle. I don't know what kind of tur turtle he is, though. Uh, and actually, in the game, I guess he counts as Fire Dragon. And he is $23, this card. See, some of the cards, I know the price on them because I wrote it down. Not all of them, though. That Pokemon has grown. Yeah, the, the Terminator, he's grown on me, too. I don't know why. He just looks really good. Yeah, I can't believe he's a dragon type. I thought he would be a... I don't know what to expect, but yeah, he was actually a dragon type in the game. Muck and a low and Muck. So I have a PSA 10 from Unbroken Bonds. This is a full art. It's not a G... Well, I mean, they're all GX, right? But it's a full art, so it's textured. And this one is 22. I'll talk to you about purchasing the Terminator. Sweet. Uh, here's another PSA 9 Shuckle. What's nice about this Shuckle, he's not rainbow rare, but you actually get his correct colors, you know? So you can see the yellow and the red and the white on the shell. And I actually think that's really nice looking. I, I'm not always a fan of the Rainbow Rare. I like it when your favorite Pokemon will actually have the correct colors. He's 22. A low end Executor. Believe it or not, I actually like Executor. I was a big fan of the Psychic Pokemon in the base game, so it's actually kind of cool to see him as a, uh, 
an actual palm tree. I thought that was very clever. <laughs> oh, this one's 40. Wow. That's a PSA 10. That's probably why. Genesect, here's a, he's also PSA 10. I, did I look up his price? I did. So Genesect GX PSA 10. I don't know much about him. He's a modern car, a modern Pokemon. He's 34. And he, <laughs> I remember this. I bought, I bought this recently. Countergain. This is a trainer card. It's got a really nice golden color to it. And uh, yeah, this one's PSA 10 as well. I don't know what this one is worth. Probably like 35 if I had to guess. All right, so that was my full arts that I have for sale. Place this back in here. Quite a few full arts. I could tell you which ones I think will sell first if I had to guess. The Espeons, the Dark Ripe. I don't know if the Toxapex will sell. I don't know how popular he is. Also the Shuckle, I suspect if more of my fans knew the Shuckle was for sale, they'd probably buy him up. I don't really advertise my cards too quickly. I'll advertise like a card a day. I don't think uh, my my fans know that that shuckle's for sale. So the full arts, uh, those are done. What about the GXs? Just the regular GXs, not full art. He says, the counter gain is $12 in mint condition. Yeah, but look up PSA 10 for him. So that's what you really need to look up. Look up PSA 10. Uh, secret rare or whatever it is so this Raichu and Alolan Raichu will actually probably sell pretty fast it's a very nice looking card Zoroark another really nice looking card I suspect this card will not have a hard time selling at all good night Ruben we have a Shuckle PSA 9 again I just love Shuckles so that's why I have so many of them oh I have a second Zoroark place this to the side here Ampharos GX. This card is already about five years old. So this is already becoming an older card. Rayquaza GX from Celestial Storm. I don't have a price on him. Blastoise GX from Unbroken Bonds. My wife will like this one. Blaziken GX. She likes Blaziken. No price on any of these, huh? How about the Tyranitar? Oh, there's a price on the... Wait, is there... Oh, I see three three numbers. Is he expensive? Here's a uh, PSA 10 Tyranitar GX. Looking really good. Here's another Turtonator. This is a, rather than the full art, this is the GX version of the card. Oh, it looks like it had a number on it too. It rubbed off. I use a Sharpie next time, so it doesn't rub off so easily. At one point you said this might be a short stream. Yeah, I know. This is uh, now an hour and a half. <laughs> PSA 10, Muck and Alolan Muck. We have, I'll move this to the side now. Darkwing, Dawnwing, I'm sorry, Dawnwing Necrozma GX. It's a nice looking card. And Duskmane Necrozma. So both of these, see? Both from Ultra Prism. You can get them at the same time. Sigil Glyph. I don't know why I obtained them. Probably just because, I don't know, I could. <laughs> oh, I really like this card, actually. Stack Attacko. He's really been growing on me. He's PSA 10. Here's a, a, an Altaria at 9. Nice looking card. And I actually had two of the Steelixes. So I had two of them. So that's the second one that you see on display. Come on now. There we go these back in here pop these babies over here yeah there you go you guys have seen most of my PSA collection now okay we've gone over most of my collection tonight just in general uh, we haven't touched this big pile right here this is more cards for sale I think these are strictly vintage cards dark slow bro the EV all right I just opened him Nido Queen PSA 8 Dark Magneton. I might keep the, all the PSA 9 Dark Magnetons. Rocket's Meowth. Dark Dragonite PSA 9. He's actually very expensive. Dark Alakazam. So these cards are for sale for the right price. These are actually valuable. PSA 10 Dark Hypno Unlimited. Yeah, that's what this pile is. Dark Magneton. 
Dark Doug Trio, he's PSA 9. Dark Magneton 8. A lot of these are going to be Rocket. Oh, this nice looking Magneton. Dark Hypno. Dark Hypno. Dark Hypno. Shining Requires. <laughs> he's kind of out of place in this pile, isn't he? He's, he's more of a modern card. Let's, I'm going to stick him on the modern card pile, actually. There you go. Makes more sense. So just a bunch more vintage cards. So those cards will sell if they go for the right price. The, the, the very first pile I showed you of the, the kind of like the almost random cards, those are just for sale just to, you know, just to unload them, basically. The GX cards and the full art cards, I expect them to sell at a, a fairly decent price, but then these, these are actually good vintage cards, so these actually have to sell for a good price. So these are, I can sit on these as long as I want, and the value of them will just go up and up, I'm sure. What PSA was Shining Rayquaza? Right, so here he is. PSA 10, Shining Rayquaza. Very nice looking card. He's like the uh, the Mew. Where's, where's that Mew at? Mew's back here. Hold on. Those are my to grade cards. It's like him, see? These guys are from the same set, actually, Shining Legends. I still have to send this guy in, <laughs> Shining Mew. Such a good looking card. I ought to send off my next pile. I think I have enough PSA cards for another grading. We're going to do bulk grading for the next pile. Yep. Shining Rayquaza. All right, so, and that Discord link should be working now. Um, really disappointed that it wasn't working, so we got that working now. You love the Shining Legend set? So, yeah, what did you guys think? Pretty cool? Um, let me just say, don't go crazy trying to buy too many cars at once. All of these purchases I made very carefully. It was all very strategic. Uh, you know, there's a lot of learning. Oh, somebody bought something. There's a lot of learning involved, in my opinion. And I've been doing eBay for so long, I know all the tricks, basically. What did he say? He said, thanks for the time tonight. You're the greatest. Everyone like and subscribe. Oh, thank you so much, man. He made a, uh, he made a donation through Streamlabs. Thank you so much, Dark Lord Pongo. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to get into Pokemon cards, I would say know how much you're allowed to spend ahead of time. Don't go crazy. If it looks like I've gone crazy, what you got to understand is I've been selling on eBay since I was 13 years old. So I've been doing this for a long time. So as long as I believe the cards are resellable, I'm not scared to actually put money on them. And uh, the, the piles change all the time for me because I actually do sell these all the time. I do sell my cards all the time. Uh, and so... If you're going to get into collecting and you're not really familiar with selling stuff online, I would say know how much you're willing to spend. Don't go over that amount, uh, even if there's a temptation to do it. And then go for exactly the cards you want. Don't, like, buy anything that, you know, don't just go crazy. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know what? The stream's been going on for an hour and 40 minutes. I think now's a good time to wrap up. What do you guys think? It's a good time. He says, I just went back into Discord. That's the same Rayquaza I was interested in. Nice. Saw Cruz says, don't listen. Buy all the cards you can, no matter the cost. That's right. <laughs> you know, I just, uh, I think when you kind of show off a card collection, it, it tempts you to just go out and spend, spend, spend. But, you know, I want you guys to, you know, pace yourself. That's all I'm saying. Just pace yourself. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess we should go ahead and hang up now, right? Or we'll do this again tomorrow night. Hopefully we get some booster packs in the mail. I imagine we would. It's been a while. And we'll see what's available tomorrow. Yeah. And I'm back to work tomorrow. So it's back to work on my main channel. All right. I want to thank you all for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.